Autogen Studio is a UI maintained by the Autogen team. We can run it locally on our device. In this tutorial, we will add a new skill using Autogen Studio to store some nodes in Obsidian. We will place the Python function needed to store the markdown file and the node content in a new skill. Next, we will use the new skill in a new agent and the new agent in a new workflow. In the playground, we select the workflow and can ask Autogen to use the new skill. This is similar to OpenAI function calling and enable us to use the workflow and storing information as markdown in our note-taking app. When we switch to Obsidian, we see our note-taking agent used the new skill and stored some information in markdown format in the app. This helps us to use Autogen to automate our research and note-taking workflow. We use in this tutorial Obsidian. There are many note-taking apps out there, from Evernote to Notion. But Obsidian has a huge advantage over them, as it is local on our device. Furthermore, it builds a graph to visualize the relationship between our nodes and thoughts. So let's dive in to see how we can use Autogen and Obsidian together using a custom new skill in Autogen Studio. We start with creating a new directory in our project folder. Next, we switch to the new directory and from inside the directory, we start Visual Studio Code. In Visual Studio Code, we create a new virtual environment and after the new virtual environment is created, we activate it. Make sure the name of the virtual environment appears before the prompt. Next, we assign our OpenAI key to OpenAI underscore API underscore key. In Windows, we use set to do this, but if you are on the Mac, you must use export instead of set. Now we are ready to install Autogen Studio. We use pip install Autogen Studio to install it. It takes a while to set up all of the packages. After the packages are installed, the prompt comes back and we can clear the screen and start Autogen Studio. To start Autogen Studio, we type Autogen Studio UI dash dash port 8081. When we navigate to the address, we see the Autogen Studio UI. In the build tab, we can add skills. These skills can be added to agents which in turn can be added in workflows. After we defined our workflows, we can test them in the playground. In the playground, we can create sessions and for each session, choose a workflow from the dropdown list. If you are happy with the execution and result, we can publish the workflow to the gallery. For a quick start and testing the API key, we can simply use one of the provided example prompts. Here we choose the markdown prompt which sends list out the top five rivers in Africa and their length and return it as a markdown table. Do not try to write any code, just write the table. Autogen generates the answer and return it as a markdown table. Although we can publish this to our gallery, we want to add a skill to Autogen to store it in our note-taking application Obsidian, which acts as our second brain. As mentioned before, Obsidian is one of the best and most popular note-taking apps and with a very active community behind it. This community has written more than 1,300 plugins for Obsidian, from to-do and calendar plugins to Kanban and mind maps. You can learn more about Obsidian using the Obsidian help. Here you can explore the core plugins. When you expand the interactive graph, you can see the relationship between the nodes. You can hover over a node to focus on the relationship of that particular node, or click the node to see the underlying information. 
You can search for Zettelkasten or PKM for Personal Knowledge Management to learn more about this subject. Back in Visual Studio Code, we can see the log of our last prompt and see the markdown table generated. We can use the Visual Studio Code to create the function to be used in the skill. We use the IDE for syntax highlighting and an environment to test the script. It doesn't have to be in our project, but to keep everything in place, I put it here. We create a Python file and paste the code for the skill in the file. To run the script, we have to choose an interpreter. Let's review the script. First, we import the required packages. Then we define a function. For simplicity, we hard-coded the root to the obsidian vault and assign it to obsidian underscore dir. As obsidian works with markdown files and the LLM may not give a name with a .md extension, we will add it if needed. Then we join the obsidian root and the name of the file with the extension .md to get the full path. And finally, write the content to the file. We can test the function and run the script with test as file name and a simple markdown string as content. When we switch to Obsidian, we see the extension is added and the file is listed in Obsidian. The markdown is rendered and we see a bold and a highlighted part in the string. We can switch to the source mode and see the content of the file. Back to Visual Studio Code, we remove the part to call the function and copy the rest to be used in our new skill. In Autogen Studio, we navigate to Build and add a new skill. We delete the sample skill and paste our custom function. We can simply use the function name as the name of the skill and save it. Next, we add an agent. We name it Note Taking Agent. This name is important as we will use it in the next step in our workflow. We give a description and add the new skill from the drop down list and save the agent. The next step is to define a workflow. We name it Note Taking Agent Workflow and give it a description. Here it is important to use our Note Taking Agent as the receiver. The sender is the user proxy. We add the skill and save the workflow. Now it's time to test the workflow, so we navigate to the playground. Here we still see our last session and the list of the African rivers. We create a new session and select the note taking agent workflow from the drop down list. With the new workflow selected, we enter the prompt. List out five OpenAI models and their context window in a markdown table and store it as a node in Obsidian. Store each model as a node too. Going back to the terminal in Visual Studio Code, we can see the communication under the hood. But as we have now the Autogen Studio, we have a much better user interface. We can see the steps and result in the much better way. Switching to Obsidian, we see the node containing the markdown table with the information and for each model a separate node with some information about the model. We can rename Dolly and change the cell in the database. It is very easy to create a link to an existing node. Back in Dolly, we can create a link back to the table. When we open the graph, we see a relationship between the table and the doll e node. We have started to build our second brain. We can click on the nodes in the graph to get to the node itself. This is the beginning of our personal knowledge management or PKM. We can surf the web and find more related information and extend our knowledge and our table. With the new table tool in Obsidian, we can easily modify our markdown table. Move rows, create new columns, and move the columns and continue with our research.
I highly recommend taking the time and build a clean, organized second brain. As for learning and organizing all of the AI information, one brain is simply not enough. So to wrap it up, working with Autogen is now much easier, using the Autogen Studio as the user interface. We can easily extend it using our new custom skills. If you need more information regarding Autogen Studio, navigate to Autogen and check the Autogen Studio blog post. Good luck using Autogen Studio and creating new skills.